So if you watched the last Machines Inc. episode, you know that I have a little bit of work to do on this XJ. If you guys haven't seen that last episode, make sure to go back and check that out before you watch this one. But today, we're finally going to address the carnage that happened in the rear axle on the XJ. So long story short, if you watched the last episode, I snapped the driver side axle shaft, uh, but then I continued to drive it for another, I can't remember, seven to 10 miles out of the trail. Um, and when that axle shaft is broken and it's not located properly, essentially the shaft is just scraping around the inside of the axle tubes. So on the trail, I cleaned out a lot of metal shrapnel, but there is so much left in there and I need to really go in there and clean all that out. And once it's clean, we can go back to inspect to see if there's shrapnel in like the differential carrier bearings, other areas like that. Because if that is the case, we have a lot more to replace. But fingers crossed, just need new axle shafts. Um, so let's go ahead and yank this thing apart, do a little damage assessment, and we'll go from there. So I do get comments often on what axles these are. So short answer is they're Dana 44s. Uh, I'm pretty sure they came out of like a late 80s Wagoneer. Uh, so they are narrowed Dana 44s, which kind of better match the size of the XJ. I will say if you're looking to upgrade the axles in your car, Dana 44s are a good option. Um, but the narrow track ones, if you're trying to run bigger tires, bigger suspension, bigger steering, all those things, packaging everything with the narrow axles is a lot harder. Um, but the reason that you'd want to upgrade from like the factory axles that would be in like a standard, you know, Jeep XJ, TJ, um, those come with a Chrysler eight and a quarter rear end. And that's what's called a C-clip axle. And what's really the defining difference between like that eight and a quarter and this Dana 44, for instance, is this is considered a semi-float axle with a press on bearing. So those four bolts you just saw me undo, that is actually holding on a bearing that's pressed to the axle shaft um, and bolted on. So even though I broke the axle shaft, it still held the wheel on. Uh, versus if you have a C-clip axle, if you break the C-clip itself, which is common, or if you break the axle itself, there's nothing actually holding this axle shaft in. So on this assembly here, we have essentially the bearing, which is pressed onto the axle shaft. And then there is this secondary retainer, which is also pressed on. Then this plate right here is what actually bolts to the axle. And that's allowing it to where the axle can't slide out. But the big deal is down inside this axle tube. I'll see if I can get a, I'll see if I can get a shot of it. <laughs> So that whole axle tube is supposed to be a smooth metal tube. It's full of oil, how it runs regularly, but that oil is now mixed with a bunch of uh, metal shrapnel um, and it's just like glitter uh, inside all of that oil. So my next big project will be cleaning all that out, but first I just need to pull all these axle shafts out, the diff out and everything. So let's get cranking. So I'm pretty surprised there was actually still much fluid in here because a lot of it ended up coming out that axle tube. The way these Dana 44s work is uh, the differential itself and the pinion, as they're moving, are slinging oil all around in here. Uh, and there's actually a cavity that allows that oil to drain down the axle tubes. And that's what lubricates the wheel bearings on the outer ends. And then just as the Jeep, you know, tilts side to side, that oil will drain back into the center. 
but that's where our problem might be. So as the metal shavings from the bearing on the driver's side start to get into the oil, that starts to flow back into the carrier. Um, so I can see if we look really close here, this really dark uh, material in the oil and the bright glitter, we can see there's definitely metal shavings. Uh, on the plus side, this axle tube had absolutely nothing in it. So fingers crossed, that got totally saved, that bearing got saved, but I still think this bearing over here is probably gonna be cooked. So yeah, we're looking at the surfaces of these bearings and we're just looking to see if there's any pitting or big scratches or anything I see out of the ordinary. Uh, like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna totally clean those and go through them a little deeper, but you know, first glance, don't see anything terrible. <laughs> so whatever I said about 10 minutes ago was absolute bullshit. I pulled off, uh, you know, obviously the side on the non-broken axle shaft and I was like, yeah, there's no pitting. It looks good, it looks whatever. Put the camera down, flipped the carrier over, and was like, oh yeah, wrong side. So yeah, there's some carnage. <laughs> so first and foremost, I forgot that the axle shaft is still lodged in the carrier. It actually snapped inside the carrier, so the carrier might be toast. All this marring is from the broken axle shaft just banging around all over it. And then you can see there is metal shavings all over that bearing. And that bearing, along with the race that came off of it, uh, is pitted up. So long story short, that side is destroyed. Uh, kind of my next steps are we need to figure out how to get this end of the axle shaft out of the carrier, see if the carrier is okay, um, because that's really the biggest thing here. Bearings, I, I think I have some bearings set around. Worst case, you know, 20 to 50 bucks, something in that range. But if that axle shaft ruined the splines in the locker, that's a thousand dollar mistake and that's a big deal. Um, so let's go and see if I can get this thing out and uh, that'll at least let me rest easy if it comes out and the carrier's not ruined. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're in business. Come right out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my broken axle shaft. So, kind of an interesting break. Um, yeah, pretty cool to see. The good news is that came out super easy. The inside of the carrier, I'll be honest, is chewed up, um, but the splines look absolutely fine. Um, and, the, you know, the, the carrier being chewed up is cosmetic. It's not a big deal at all. It kind of seems like all the shrapnel was contained in this uh, bearing on the carrier. So obviously the shrapnel was in the axle tube. The oil actually has to pass through the bearing to get back into the carrier, which is by design to lube the bearing. Um, but in my case, it actually worked out that the bearing acted like a pre-filter and filtered out all those metal shavings. So yes, did tank the bearing. Good news is though, the rest of the bearings look fine. I don't see any pitting, but like the pinion bearing and the, uh, well, wheel bearings are gonna get replaced anyways. Um, but yeah, really the pinion that I have to pull out and reset that is awesome. Uh, so anyways, I'm gonna call it for today. I'm kind of over messing with this thing, but uh, really stoked that it's not nuked and we'll get some more shafts coming. All right, so we're back in the garage. It's a new day and I got a new tool. So. I went ahead and bought one of these bearing removal tools. Um, this one's from Vivor. I asked them if they wanted to hook up the channel. They said, hell no, your channel sucks. So I bought that with my own money. Uh, but it's a good tool to have. Honestly, it, you pretty much destroy bearings and shims trying to pull bearings off of carriers or pinions any other way. Um, and the Vivor one's pretty cheap. Like the Yukon one's like 600 bucks. The Vivor one looks identical and it's like $95. So not a terrible option. And then secondarily, I looked through my box of spare shims, bearings, and seals, and I had a couple more Dana 44 bearings. So I'm just gonna replace the one on the side that had the shrapnel in it, but glad I don't have to go out and buy even more bearings.
Well, I have tried and tried to make this thing work, and uh, it's just machined incorrectly. If you're doing a carrier, though, you use this plug, which acts kind of like the pinion, and this should slide all the way inside, but it stops right there. There's a lip on the inside, and this is too big to fit, uh, but it is what it is. So I will move on to other things and probably start cleaning out the uh, axle shaft tubes. So it's been about a week. I decided to just go ahead and order another tool because I thought that one was like a manufactured defect. New one finally came in. And the good news is that the plug does slide into the puller like the first one didn't. The bad news is it arrived like this. <laughs> so somebody clearly already used this thing. Um, the threads are stripped out on the, uh, the actual part that threads into the puller here. All the paint is nuked. I mean, someone, someone used this thing for a while before they returned it. So I'm definitely gonna return it, mostly because the threads are stripped on it. And I mean, I paid full price for this thing, so I don't want one that's absolutely, you know, destroyed. Uh, but since it's already used, fuck it. I'm gonna use it to pull this bearing off and then go return it and call it a day. I think we all know that you get what you pay for. Um, I was hoping this $100 tool could be good. And honestly, in the future, I might even try to rebuy it if I can get a new one that's, uh, that actually works. Uh, but yeah, that's two for two that were pretty shitty from Amazon. So thanks, Vivor. Thanks, Amazon. Uh, but yeah, let's get to ripping this bearing off uh, and then go return these tonight before UPS closes. All right, well, we got uh, Machine Zinc's favorite character back over here. After going through two of these tools, uh, finally I just hit up Mark because I knew he had one. So he came over, hooked it up. Appreciate you. In the worst. But uh, yeah, now we just get to pull this absolutely mangled bearing off of here. So fingers crossed this guy works and we don't wreck it. Oh, it'll work. And just to let you guys know that Subatech Industries, Colorado's leading Subaru specialist, is the one providing the equipment for all of this. Thanks for sponsoring this video, Subatech Industries. Yes, yes. Yeah, the other one had like a lip inside of it. And so this went until right there. <laughs> and then just fucking stopped. Oh, that's a fucking pain in the ball sack. Yeah, that was fucking bullshit. Oh, it, oh dude, it just fell it's off. It just come off? I think it was broken already. Nice! <laughs> I forgot maybe I didn't even need this shit. We had two and a half <laughs> weeks old tools oh and it just gosh. falls off. Mark, can I come and get that thing? Thanks, Mark. All right, so now that we got this bearing off. It came off super easy and I didn't realize there was actually a crack in the casing. I probably could have beaten this off with like a hammer and some other tools. Um, so A, glad I didn't buy the tools. B, thank you again to Mark. Uh, the sponsor for today's video, Subatech Industries, for providing that tool. Uh, now the next thing is we need to get that new bearing on. And before I do that, I wanna clean up the face of this carrier. We're just gonna hit this really quick with a flat wheel to clean it up. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and put that new bearing on. So now it is time to press the bearing on this carrier, and I don't have a bearing press. So we're gonna do this the kind of redneck way. It's pretty cold outside right now. It's probably in like the, I don't know, 30s, 40s, something like that. And I'm gonna put the bearing in the oven, which is gonna heat it up and expand the bearing. This carrier is nice and cold, so the metal is contracted. And once the bearing gets up to temp, we should be able to, just be able to drop it on there. A few light taps should go right into place. Uh, I do like to put a little lube around here, just a little gear oil, kind of helps it slide on there. Um, so let's go toss the bearing in the oven and uh, get it nice and hot. So Kerry can taste thread pitch. I can uh, feel by hand thousandths of an inch, 
we're in spec. <laughs> so we got this carrier in, we got backlash set. Uh, the backlash is about 11 thousandths of an inch, which I'm not excited about. Am I stoked on it? No. Does this car see a lot of miles? No. Uh, so we're going to call it because I don't want to mess with it. I like to print out torque sheet specs for cars. Uh, this is super nice. A, I know it's easy enough to Google it, but especially on this Jeep, like before a wheeling trip, go through and do a full bolt torque spec check. So anyway, it's just having like a really quick guide, print this out and be able to sling over the axle is awesome. And on here, I know that my carrier bearing caps are 80 foot pounds. So let's just go ahead and send it. All right, so carrier's in. I got that line plumbed all nicely. And it's time to toss the cover back on. Alright, so we got that diff all together. Some great progress. And I think I'm going to call the video here. So, I haven't uploaded a video in a while. And I want to start doing just some smaller, easier videos. I know this one took a couple weeks to film just because I couldn't get the right tools in time. Uh, but, this is a huge stepping stone. So, let's feel accomplished. Let's post a video about it. And then past that, I'm still waiting for my axle shafts. Those had to get custom ordered. And I think we're gonna start tackling the rear suspension. So now that the axle's kind of sealed up, I feel comfortable like cutting and grinding in the garage. I'm not gonna get metal dust inside the axle. I'll just cover up the end of the axle tubes. And uh, I think the next video will probably be rear suspension. And then after that, hopefully get the axle shafts and this bad boy will be rolling again. Really appreciate you guys following along. I know I haven't been uploading super regularly, but this stuff is expensive. So if you guys want to fund this and uh, see some more videos from Machines Inc., please like, subscribe, share this video, get as many views as possible, and uh, let's crank out some cool projects. So thanks for watching along. We'll see you next time.